Let's just, should we do our intro? Molly and Father Michael, they got a brand new show. Talking geek with the No Hits Love Podcast. Here we go. They're breaking down the Bible. Teaching us what it means. Spreading love and knowledge like you've never seen. They dive deep into the scriptures, chapter by chapter. Exploring all the things of old, but a disaster. Punk rock vibes and natural average breeze. Bringing faith and music together for the Welcome to the Nose Love Podcast. I am Father Michael. And I'm Molly. Welcome. Don't don't cut all that time out before. There's some, there's some real good in stuff in I there. know. <laughs> Kiss 100 boys in bars. <laughs> um, I'm wearing my new PJs. What do you think, everybody? They I look really got, comfortable. I just got them today. I haven't worn them to bed yet, so I'll keep you updated. As but... opposed to so like pajama pants yeah. often are like fleece. Like yeah. Thick. Those look very light and summery. Yeah. And... Yeah. <laughs> I've been needing a new pair of pajama pants. Um and I was like, well, I'm not going to get shorts because like this I could wear in the winter or the summer, uh, I feel okay. like. Because like you just make you make your house the temperature you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um so I thought I I thought I'd get these. Nice. Yeah. It's a good color. I thought so too. And the little pajama stripes. Mm-hmm. They're the most pajama pajamas I think I've They're ever like had. They're like classic pajama yeah, looking, yeah. I know, I like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Do you wear a little um, hat? <laughs> sleeping cap. cap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Polar Express. <laughs> oh, they're in like they're like sleep like their gowns. Yeah, they're not. That, gowns. I feel like that would be weird. Like you would get like all tangled up in that, it. That's absolutely what happens. I haven't worn a nightgown in a very long time, but I remember when I was little and I would wear nightgowns. I, for some reason, this is burned into my brain. I had this princess nightgown, and I would always wake up so uncomfortable. Like, why would you wear want to wear a dress? Why is that a yeah. thing? Yeah, it's way better to. To not wear a dress. It's really, <laughs> I agree. Um, it's really for like if you're Scrooge and you have your candle yeah. and your hat and you're like creeping around your house yeah. looking for ghosts. Yeah. But it's like that's what a bathrobe is for. Do you have a bathrobe? No, but I kind of want one. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you could be a bathrobe guy. Father Josh has become a bathrobe guy. As of recently? Uh, months. Did he just go out and buy a bathrobe one day? I'm trying to remember why there was... There was a reason that I can't remember. And maybe he doesn't want me talking about. Um, <laughs> but he, he decided to start wearing a bathrobe. I think I used I used to when I was younger. Oh, like, bathrobes are the best. Yeah, it seems First like a good idea. First thing I do when I wake up, put my bathrobe on, go out. Yeah. Even if I'm like, as long as I'm not hot, I'll yeah. put it on. Even if I'm not cold. Obviously, when you're cold, it's great because I have a like, fuzzy one. Mm. That's the way to go rather than like a thin one. It's like, what's yeah, the point? Yeah, I want something comfortable. Yeah. Cozy. So all that, even if, yeah. It's just like that coziness that you walk out, make your coffee in your bathroom, yes. slippies. Really, whatever you can do to stop the world from intruding on the coziness of bed yes, uh, is a good thing. <laughs> that, that, that's our next that's kind of my whole, for merch. It's my whole philosophy. <laughs> I think it's a great philosophy. But today we're going to talk about the world <laughs> ending. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, I had a connection to... Something you said earlier, but it's gone. That's fine. Oh, no, it was about kissing boys in bars oh. from that song that maybe if the world was ending and you were in a bar and Zach was there, then you would kiss Zach in a bar. Yes, that's true. That's... Yeah. <laughs> I guess you're right. So that was my, that was my uh, segue. And so here we are at our topic. Here we are. This is Father Matthew's idea, right? Yeah, he, he called me. I was driving. Today? Yeah, so oh. I was at my parents this afternoon was coming back here to do this. And uh, we <laughs> talked and that's what he suggested. Nice. Um, I've probably told you this before. I assume I've said it on the podcast, but I've definitely preached about it. When I was ordained, May twenty first, twenty eleven, was uh, a day freshman of year high of grade school. Of high school. Um, when Sorry. you were born in two thousand twenty. Um, <laughs> when was I born? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this Protestant like minister said the world was going to end that day for sure. Oh, really? And there were even like trucks driving around the country. Getting pe- telling people to get ready because that day was going to be the end of the world. And oh, uh, that must have been a weird was like, feeling. Please let it be like the afternoon. Like, yeah, I would love <laughs> like, to die through a this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> too much to 
to That's miss out on. That's really hilarious. Yeah. The world obviously did not end. And here you are, however many years, 13, 14. 13 years later. Are you coming up almost. on 14? Or is it almost 13? Almost 13 okay. in like 22 days or something. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, well. The world didn't net. Yeah. I feel like that happens every every couple of years. Totally. Like there's some. I remember one. I can't remember when it was. Maybe it was that one. But like that was that intense where people mm-hmm. were just like, "Do you okay? Be honest. Do you have a little bit of fear when people say that, no. or are you like no? I'm like I don't believe people, but for some reason it makes me a little nervous, which is so funny. Even though I'm like. But that's just like my personality. I'm like, well, maybe. Uh, yeah. Like with the eclipse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody thought the world was going to end with the eclipse. Not people everybody. A lot of people thoughts, did. Yeah. Um, I just remember texting you right before. Yes. And it was like, it was you were dark there. there. Yeah. <laughs> but it was getting weird here. And you're like, this could be the longest four minutes of my life. I know. I was, I was freaked out, man. Yeah. Um, but we don't need to be afraid of that. That's kind of like kind of where I am. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying this is like I earned this, but what is the worst thing that could possibly happen is I die. Yeah. Like, well, that's kind of what's supposed to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen eventually. Did you ever? I feel like a lot of people share in this experience when you were little, and even now, when you picture heaven, you think about how it doesn't end, and then you like have a mini panic attack. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Um, that is, I think, a hard. Well, obviously, it's a on a concept that like cannot be grasped Eternity. grasped yeah i like we think about at least i think about heaven mm-hmm. whatever not whatever but like oh yeah. yeah heaven but then like the the part about it never ending yeah oh that's crazy yeah. like i just if you sit with that thought it like i don't know why it makes me like lose my breath it's like standing on the edge of a cliff or something where it's like oh it's too big yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it but yeah. like that that's what we're we're meant for. I think because like we only know temporary satisfaction. Yeah. It's like really hard for us to it's impossible for us to grasp that. I think about like the times where I've felt most out of myself for whatever reason, like yeah. doing something and just really feeling like and it could be like a, a religious experience or just like I think I thought about it a lot, um, I don't know. I used to like mountain bike in seminary. Oh, kind of cool. like where you're just like into it. Yeah. And you're not really like, you can't think about anything else. Like yeah. that's sort of just, you're fully alive. Yeah. Oh, were you saying it was it? like, it's like heaven <laughs> in the sense that like, <laughs> you kind of like, left <laughs> I did. <laughs> I forgot it's the rest like, of the, what analogy. about mountain biking? <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, just that, um, that feeling of just being fully alive and out of yourself and not concerned about the future or the past. And, yeah. Yeah. I think it, it's like we're so used to the idea of death. Yeah. You know, like, so I think people are too busy being afraid of dying that we don't even, like, conceptualize, like, heaven. I yeah. remember talking to my Theology of the Body class, like, that I taught a couple of years ago. I think it was, like, the first semester I taught it, actually, taught in, like, explaining what heaven is and, like, what it's like for us mm-hmm. and a kid being, like, that does not sound like something I want to do. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Thank you for saying that. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like a Catholic, you know, practicing kid. And that's understandable. Like, totally. it's so weird to, like, conceptualize the idea of just, like, worshiping God forever and, like, the fact that marriage isn't a thing in heaven. And, like, you're not going to be, like, it's not like, oh, I'll get a special house with my family and, like, <laughs> best friends. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, all these like romanticized ideas of heaven that we have. It's like actually just worshiping God for eternity altogether is the body of Christ. But I also think that like, it's better than what it's better than all those romantic things that we think about. Totally. That like, that like, Oh, if we don't have that, then it's not going to be happiness. Well, we're going to be in communion with each other way more than we are now. Yeah. Like we're going to know each other perfectly and see each other perfectly. And it's, um, yeah. And the idea of, you know, just worshiping God 24 seven, like here on earth is like, most people wouldn't say they want to do that. Like 24 mm-hmm. seven. <laughs> You're not going to get tired or bored in heaven. Right. And like, but the, the thing is that it will, it's not just like, it's the right thing to do. So it's better. It's like, we will be exactly who we were made to be mm-hmm. in our fullness 
and like as c- close to Christ as we possibly can be. And so that's actually what will make us the happiest. Like we won't think about or want those other things. We won't, I won't wish I was still married and like mm-hmm. still had a marriage, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, I'll just be so focused on Jesus. And like that will, will be fully satisfying because you're purified before mm-hmm. you go to heaven. You know, I also think we don't lose everything that mattered. Yeah. Like, Relation relationships are kind of the only thing we take with us when we die. Yeah, um, yeah. I, you should read, you, I, I mean the people. Okay, should you can I'll, too. I, I might. Uh, <laughs> everything you wanted to know about heaven, but were afraid to ask by Dr. Peter Kraft. Oh, I haven't really, even heard of that. Really solid and and goes in through like uh, questions yeah, and so you don't want the duck sitting next to you. No. Um, <laughs> I need yeah. space. Yeah, it goes through like questions like that and thinks through them really clearly and like philosophically. But we're getting getting we're jumping the gun. Are we? We got to end the world first. Oh, I forgot about that part. <laughs> yeah, ended. Do you world remember Y two K? What is that? That was like in the year when it was nineteen ninety nine. There was this. Uh, it wasn't to be a, two again. <laughs> this is why there was this thought that wasn't false that the. All the computers going date wise from 1999 to 2000 was going to mess them up. All computers, and like understand. there was something true to that, but they f- like they fixed it. So there was something in programming like they knew the year 2000 was coming, but they didn't like that's that's the future. We'll have flying cars by then, but like it oh, computers. We're, I'm badly we're explaining this. That. We're gonna and they would all. So like the catastrophe scenario was like. We lose the internet. Everything is gonna shut off. Okay. All the power is gonna go off. Well, and like okay. I don't know. Planes are gonna fall out of the sky. Oh, okay. Um, I did not know that. Okay. So I re- I re- you asked the question of like being afraid. And I wasn't like afraid, but I was like, oh man, what if what if this does really happen? And were you how old were you at that time? Um uh, I was born in 1983, so seventeen. Okay. Yeah. So that I feel like that makes sense, that age of Yeah, like... I was aware. Yeah. yeah. But nothing happened. Yeah. And yeah. So I think that and like all the different like end of the world, the eclipse, people have been doing this for a very long time of yeah. saying, hey, guys, this is it. And they're wrong. Yeah. You know, not the hour. <laughs> you stole my quote that I was grabbing Did my I? phone for. That's perfect. From the Bible. The, from the Bible. <laughs> um, Jesus says. What's up? I wish See, he said, I wish he said that. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hello. <laughs> he shows up in the upper room after the resurrection. Hey what's guys. What's up, guys? <laughs> yeah, therefore stay awake for you know neither the day nor the hour. But then also um I like this a lot. You will hear of wars and reports of wars. See that you are not alarmed for these things must happen. It will not be yet the end. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes from place to place. All these are the beginnings of the labor pains. Um, and it kind of just goes on from there, the same sort of thing that, like, we can always see that stuff in the world. Yeah. And we can think, like, oh, this this has to be it. Things can't get worse than this. Or, like, this has to be the most important time. But I think it's, like, really us-centered a lot of the time when it's stuff yeah. like that, that, that we think about. Well, like it, we we are the most important people that ever lived. This must be the time, and it hasn't been yet. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean it's not going to be, but we just we like don't know. We don't know. So we need to always be prepared. Mm-hmm. Does that mean we can? I mean, I well, I guess I'll say this. I could see, and I've experienced that thought, like leading to fear for me. Yeah, of like. You know, I'm always trying my best. <laughs> Maybe not always trying my best, but mm-hmm. overall. <laughs> mm-hmm. But like, what if the world ends at the like perfectly wrong moment for like, oh, I fell into this sin and like yeah. after that, like I can see and have experienced that idea leading to a lot of fear mm-hmm. and kind of almost taking away my like freedom in love. And sometimes it's turned it into like, I have to go to confession because if I don't and I die right mm-hmm. now, I will go to hell rather than like, I have to go to confession because like I mess up and I love God and I want to make things right. And like, yeah. that's been, I think that's been a way we were talking about, I think we were just in general talking about scrupulosity mm-hmm. right the other day, just oh, like yeah, yeah. not on the podcast in person in real yeah, life, in real life yeah, <laughs> outside the studio. <Yes. laughs> um, 
But I think that's a way I've struggled with it a lot. So I don't know. Do you have any like thoughts on how we kind of overcome that? And I guess how do we find the balance? That's not uncommon. Yeah. And I think people like rushing to confession because they're like, I could get in a car wreck and I know that I need to go to confession. And like, there's absolutely some truth in that of like, you, we shouldn't be reckless with our souls mm -hmm. of just like, you know, if we have a serious sin, we should go to confession. I guess kind of like, but in terms of like thinking about the future and planning ahead of like, what if the world ends at, at the moment and I'm not in the right space? Like our whole lives do matter mm -hmm. and it's God's not out to trick us is something I say a lot and to people who are scrupulous. And, and I think just that, like, if we're, if we're actively trying, we're still going to fall. Um, but like yeah. having always having that desire to get up again and start over again and to not get comfortable with our sins that even if we are struggling to keep coming back to him to even before we can go to confession, like say you need to, you know, you need to go to confession to like make an act of contrition in your heart to, yeah. to uh, ask for, for God's forgiveness. Like those things, they do matter. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's not the sacrament yet. Yeah. I think also like, that mindset can take away, not what you said, but mm -hmm. like what I was talking about can take away like what actually brings healing to struggles with sin or like, mm -hmm. like if we're just so focused on like, you know, we commit the sin and then it's like, if I don't, I need to get to confession in case I die. So I need to do that right away. And then you're just so like paranoid. Yeah. Got to get to confession. And that's all you're thinking about rather than why you want to go to confession. And like, yeah. In moments like that in my life, like it's taken away the like freedom to heal, mm -hmm. I think. And like it just kind of perpetuates habitual sin, I feel like, mm -hmm. because I'm not I'm focused more on just like checking the box so that I don't go to hell rather than like healing my relationship with the Lord. Obviously, yeah. the sacrament does some healing, a lot of healing like it. Yeah. So I'm not like trying to discount the grace of the sacrament. But like. I also like it kind of takes away like how much I accept it and like mm -hmm. put it forth into my life. Does it that make sense? Yeah. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. Like mm -hmm. I think there's a, like a, a belief underneath that sort of like, I got to go to confession in case that I like that I have to be perfect. Yeah. And in some sense, yes, we are called to be perfect, but that doesn't mean like I sin, I got to go. I'll take care of it. Then I'll be good. Yeah. Because then we live in this sort of like, it's like a, I was going to say a yo-yo, but it's more, more like a pendulum, like yeah, back that's and right. forth. Um, yo-yo up and down. Uh, uh, Did you distract yourself by the yo-yo up and down? Line? There was there was a video that we had when we were kids called Yo-Yo Man or Yo-Yo Master. I don't remember, but it was okay. literally like a instructional yo-yo video on VHS tape. Dude, I remember you know, at my school there was like, professional yo-yoers who would come people don't yo-yo anymore i bet kids don't know about yo-yos i'm pretty sure i'm right i don't should, think kids know about yo-yos i'm gonna get on youtube after this because i want to know like is there like a professional yo-yoing league like i'm sure there is there's got to be some crazy stuff and there was like this i don't know when i could like you could win a yo-yo at my school or something man like different like cool yo-yos i was never I'm good just, at that it. just like unlocked a, yeah i was all right I wasn't great. Uh -huh. Man, yo-yos. Yeah. It's a simpler time. Yeah, it was a simpler time. Piece of string, plastic. That's it. That's all you need. Now TikTok and <laughs> uh, Snapchat. <laughs> you, just, you just aged 20 years. I literally. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, sorry. Yo -yos. We're not supposed to be afraid. And uh, and I think, like, especially when it, in terms of, like, the big cosmic end of the world sort of fear jesus pretty clearly says we're not going to know and and the thing we should do is just be vigilant mm -hmm. not for the sake of like and what drives me crazy mm. it's kind of like catholic prepping like preppers like doomsday prepping doomsday prepping oh, totally I, i'm just like if the world freaking if there's a zombie apocalypse yeah i'm kill me i'm ready I'm not I'm not going to hide in a bunker and drink not, drink all the water and the yeah. canned goods that I saved in there. Uh-huh. 
I'm ready to go at that uh, point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, anyway, I don't, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to mock people for like protecting their families. And I yeah. think like having kids would change how you see certain things. But the idea that like some spiritual, like crazy end of the world thing will, will come and God wants us through often through like very like sketchy spiritual practices to stay safe from it mm -hmm. is pretty ridiculous and I agree. jesus seems to say like be vigilant by like you know doing what he commands us to do like and we're going to be ready to life. meet him yeah because uh -huh. mm -hmm. it, it we are all going to die and the world is going to end one day mm -hmm. yep <laughs> well i was thinking of like people using the scriptures to try to like tease out the idea of like this is what's going to happen and oh yeah when you and, just like copy and paste one scripture verse out of context or like looking at something like the book of revelation and be like well this is a a map for us of exactly what's going to uh -huh. happen and it's usually about the united states and uh a lot of things like that that also is like we, we're not supposed to live like that i feel like that just perpetuates living in fear mm -hmm. we're not I meant can, to live in fear and i can understand the temptation Mm -hmm. wanting to figure it all out and like whatever yeah but yeah i just th that's so distracting from like the actual vigilance we're called to have yes it's like the wrong kind of vigilance yeah because there's nothing we can do about that um that doesn't affect heaven for us or salvation yeah. for us you know yeah i think the vigilance is like watching for like where am I supposed to love like yeah. the people that God sends my way? How am I supposed to love them? How am I supposed to like be vigilant against temptation? Is the way are the things that people I'm surrounding myself with, like making me more of who God mm -hmm. wants me to be like, yeah. What does my daily life look like? Does it, and like, is this the life that I want to show God when I <laughs> yeah. die? Like yeah. that I want to like in a real way answer to. Yeah. The God that we're going to meet in the end is the God that we're meeting today every yeah. day that's maybe not really as clearly important. or as obviously um, but it's just as obvious to him yeah and it's just as real yeah um and so that yeah we're meant to live every day as if you know it's our last mm -hmm. not in fear but like that it matters yeah and, um every without getting into perfectionism or scrupulosity like everything matters because mm -hmm. it's all an opportunity to love and it's all a chance to to say yes to god how do we deal with fear surrounding like death slash the world ending if yeah. that's something that we struggle with hmm. do people ever ask you that in like confession and stuff they'll sometimes bring up less death which is interesting that is interesting yeah i think and even like not so much in confession but talking to older people who are oh yeah sick or, or just not well like closer to death a lot of them seem to come to a piece about it um but, you know, there's got to be fear there. But I think people, people, because they watch the news too much, um, will get very worked up about certain things like it could be like Israel or um, the presidential election, like this, that they're freaking out. And I'm, I don't again, I don't want to mock people, but I think if we're living with that constant, like, look at this thing, it's the most important, terrible thing that's ever happened. We're going to live in fear. And Dude. so. Yeah, that and I think people don't recognize it. Yes. And that's where I, I try to inject like inject that like you don't have to pay attention to this. Like pay attention to God. I hate the news. Yeah. I never watch the news and I'm glad I don't. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a little behind on things, but like I find out about the big things because everyone's talking about them. Yeah. But like I don't know, it's never like made me happier. Or like it's never done anything good for me like being super informed about everything that's happening doesn't no. doesn't benefit me at all yeah like what changes in your what can i do yeah and sometimes there are things that we can do for certain movements or causes that mm -hmm. are important or whatever but like at the end of the day like continuing for me at least to mm -hmm. take that in distracts me from like what i can actually do to love god in this moment in my life like, yeah by loving the people around me things like that mm -hmm. yeah kinda... most of the time i don't want to be a crossword there are very important issues for sure <laughs> but but often like we can't affect them yeah and i I, th I don't know i think about a lot that there's like a circle around me of things that i can influence 
for good. And like so much, there's so many things that we hear about that are outside of that circle. Um, and it's not like less important to do a really good job with the things closest to us. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that really matters because that's where we can actually make a difference. But God, not that you shouldn't vote or like wait. you should do the things that we've been given the chance to do, but knowing everything is not helpful mm -hmm. and being afraid of everything is less helpful. There's a quote. I think it's Mother Teresa, maybe. It says, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Yeah. And I think that just, like, is a good example of the idea of, like, loving, yeah, what, where you've been placed specifically, like, your greatest call is to love, like, mm -hmm. the direct people in your life. Yeah. And what, Zach and I talk about that a lot of just, like, supporting, like, our town, too, mm -hmm. and, like, doing what we can to, like, make Steubenville a better place mm -hmm. and, like whatever Wintersville. <laughs> <laughs> yes um yeah again i think you're right and we're, we're just saying the same thing over and over like not that the other things don't matter but like i would say that's our greatest calling is like yeah. those things like your your greatest calling is to love your parishioners yes yeah and that doesn't mean you don't love all the other catholics and all the other non-catholics and mm -hmm. stuff but like that's your specific role that you've been given mm -hmm. you know and the first thing is to do that well and to love your family and your friends Everything else can really can turn into a, a distraction by thinking too big. And I think this is where it ties into this end of the world stuff. I can use being ready for the end as in thinking about it too much and uh, living in fear as a, a way to not do the stuff that I should be doing closest to me. Mm -hmm. And I totally it's, it's like if I'm mad about some big thing in the church, OK, maybe I'm right. But does it it doesn't change what I'm supposed to do here in the parish. Yeah. And I think that's a good I don't know. I've had to call myself out on that before of just like, yeah, yeah, you're really mad and like fired up about this. But pay attention to what you can actually make a difference. Yeah, in. Don't let it distract you from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The things you can actually change in effect. Yeah. That's really huge, yeah. especially having a, a daughter. Now I think about that sometimes like some things that I like literally can't change. That really upset me. I can get so upset that like I might be thinking about that so much and focusing on that that I'm not like emotionally connecting with her as much. They're mm -hmm. like playing with her as much. Like obviously I'm still taking care of her, but sometimes I'm just so mad about something that I'm like, I'm just going to like be mad about this when yeah. it's like, I can't change that, but I can impact my daughter in every mm -hmm. moment, you know, and that like, it's a really good perspective to have. I think you can bring that to a broader scale, but yeah, yeah. Where are ducks' ears? Oh, I think they're just little holes, and they're, I think they're under the feathers. Like where you would think ears are? Yeah, where ears belong. Okay. Anyway, oh, sorry. No, I just okay. that was, I didn't think about that. It's a terrifying thought. I know, I don't like it. <laughs> it I don't like that they don't have ears. Everyday duties. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd like if they had ears. <laughs> I guess I'm imagining them with human ears. Uh. I kind of like that. Well, I don't all ears like. No, I'm. What was I? What I was? I don't understand. A duck with dog ears would be funny. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, with floppy dog ears. <laughs> Bunny ears. Anyway. Yeah. Three days of darkness. I think it's total crap. Mm -hmm. Why? Hot take. Uh. Hot <laughs> take. Drops it's, mic. It, it's not something that the church teaches. Um. Let it. Let it be known. So that's that. Uh. And then, I, at least from what I've read and looked at, like even the places where people say that it comes from, it's not even clear that that's for yeah. sure. It's just not a clear thing. So yeah, so that's just one of the one of those things where it's like, oh, I really need, we need to be prepared. Like, well, that's not that important. Yeah, the rapture. Catholics don't believe in that. I'm just <laughs> going it through my mind. The the I know, like all things. the I know. I'm trying to. Yeah, don't. Be all you need to know is you don't know. Yeah, but. Love God today the best you can in mm. this moment. Yeah. And if you've messed up, trust in his mercy. Go to confession. But out of love. Yeah. Ideally. Go to confession. There's, there's, yeah, I know. Yeah. There's perfect <laughs> and imperfect contrition. They're both good. Either but, way, you know. Yeah. But you don't need to, like, call a priest necessarily and go at the next possible moment that you can go. Would you agree with that? I'm always torn on that. Uh, okay. Um, like, if... You've committed a mortal sin and you know you have. Yeah. You should make every effort to go to confession soon. Yes. Like, yeah. 
I think that's probably the most prudent thing is like to, and and maybe maybe that is before the next like scheduled confession. Yeah, there's not one so that you go soon. Yeah. Um, but I guess here I'm like, I'm used to living here where there's like 50 million off every other all the day, time. Yeah. So sometimes I'll like ask to go to you if it's like more personal and I like want to talk about something. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I know if I ever want to go to confession, I could probably go the next day or two yeah. days at the most. So yeah. I think I'm kind of coming from that mindset. I'm not saying don't yeah. I feel weird about it. No, I think the thing. danger, which is absolutely true, is that sort of just like swing back and forth like, oh, I said I got to get this cleaned up so I'm good again. Yeah. Um, Because that is that is not about God. That is like perfectionism. Yeah. And even if you do need to go to confession, like that idea of keeping my own slate clean constantly is uh not healthy yeah it's more about the mindset i think yeah behind whatever you're doing Mm -hmm. yeah so don't be afraid oh you say that all the time in confession ironically really yeah oh good. god loves you don't be afraid good those are some good there's some good truths we need to hear and they're really like basic truths but they're really important every time you say that i'm like i you know i i don't not need to be reminded about that because i'm 27 yeah i guess i'm 26 for a couple more days three more days sorry three a few Uh, i thought you said three i was like i don't think it's three (laughs) i don't know math (laughs) uh i used to every time i heard a confession after the person said their sins i would say that's a good confession and um did you stop that recently no well because i i i definitely used to do that I, I feel like I remember that you still do that, but maybe, maybe sometimes. I'm just okay. Yeah, I. But like a few people said, like, <laughs> like why? Really? Why was it a good confession? And like, I'm, I didn't not mean it. I was yeah. like, like, well, you expressed your sins. So then I started saying, "God loves you and forgives you," mm-hmm. and I kind of take it for granted because I say it maybe a hundred times a week. Yeah. Pro- maybe. Probably more. It's a lot. Yeah. Um. But uh, every once in a while, like that, like nails somebody in the heart. Really? That they that I just say that, which I don't even think about anymore. Yeah, it's like a um, habit at this point. Yeah, and just like, and somebody has even commented like that I needed to hear that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, That's great. Keep saying it. I'm gonna. Okay. It's a good confession. <laughs> you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> High five. <laughs> That's what little kids do sometimes. First confession. Oh, that is you put your so hand cute. up for the prayer at the oh, end, and they high five you. My, that is amazing! <laughs> wow, that's so awesome. Yeah. So I told the group that we just had several days ago. I told them like, when the priest puts his hands up, he's praying. You don't need to. You don't need yeah. to do anything. He's like incorporate that into what you teach now. That's funny. High five. High five. Molly. Yes. How's God loved you lately? The warm weather. <laughs> yeah. It's getting it's really getting warm. Be, I know. it's, But it's not too hot yet. Mm-hmm. It's just like the sun being out is just so great. Yeah. And it just boosts your mood. Mm-hmm. So the sunshine. Yeah. What about you, Father Michael? Um, a really hard but good conversation the other day mm. um, with a friend and... Yeah, I think just honesty and yeah, willingness to like yeah, to be honest with each other was very positive. Yeah. And yeah. That's good. Mhm. <laughs> That's all. You do an awkward purposeful smile, but you you go you like I can't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it if I try. <laughs> but we'll see you next time. Bye. Next time. Next time. Bye. 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 Don't need no choir Father Michael strumming on his guitar Setting fire They're rebels in the pulpit Spreading truth and grace Taking down the walls With every step they take